Again, to Wednesday Connection, Pastor Kevin Mendel coming to you from Grace Community Church of God here in Cleveland, Tennessee. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the word together and one anothering. And at the beginning of this year, 2021, the uh, Holy Spirit is just leading me to encourage the body of Christ to realize and understand that a part of his purpose and a part of his plan is that we do life together. And the one another rings of scripture over 50 times in the New Testament, the, the Bible talks about one another ring. And so it's important. But we, we don't just do one another ring with our biological families, but with our spiritual families, with the uh, household of faith. In fact, Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Again, God uses uh, natural things to help us understand spiritual things. And uh, certainly the biological family, God's design is that people be less alone. And I believe that that's a part of the body of Christ uh, so that no one falls through the cracks. We know that because we live in a fallen world uh, since original sin, that the family union, uh, the family unit God's design for the family has been impacted in many negative ways. In today's time in the 21st century, there are a lot of blended families, a lot of brokenness. I'm not judging people by that. I'm just stating the fact that we've observed that there's a lot of brokenness and, and the enemy understands how important it is uh, that we do life together and that one should chase a thousand, but two should put 10,000 to flight. The Bible says if any two agree is touching anything, you know, there's power in when we pray together and when we do life together and uh, as the household of faith, because I'm talking to uh, on our teachings here on Wednesday Connection to the church, the body of Christ, the community of faith. We talked about that last week. First uh, Timothy 3.15 says, but in case I'm delayed, I write to you so you uh so you will know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. Do you know that as the body of Christ, the church of the living God, you and I are the pillar and support of the truth? Jesus said, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, the truth uh, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so we live the truth and we are people, uh, 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 the people of God, the family of God, the household of God. And so uh, we're reminded that God wants us to do life together, both with him in relationship with God and relationship to one another. The church is where people of faith and, and where God dwells. The temple, again, in the Old Testament was where God dwelt, right? But, but today, God dwells in, uh, uh, in the church. In the New Testament, God dwells in the church. So being a part of the, the church, the, the body of Christ, and then being a part of a local body is what helps make us family and to do life together and to fulfill the scriptures about being together and worshiping together and praying together and bearing one another's burdens and 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 uh, encouraging one another right ephesians 3 14 and 15 says the apostle paul says for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named we have the same father uh and just uh, a, a fellow brother in, in the church said Hello, my brother from another mother. <laughs> and he was right. We have different mothers. And yes, we have different biological fathers, but we have the same spiritual father. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, 
He said, when you pray, start it like this. Our Father. We have the same Father. And uh, so we're the family of God, right? Uh, because we have a spiritual birth when we accept Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. We are born again into the family of God, right? Ephesians 2, 13, and then, uh, 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 and then 17 through 19. Now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 17, and Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far off and those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit, Holy Spirit, to the Father. Now, therefore, we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Because of Holy Spirit, because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are now the family of God, called to do life together and to observe and experience the one anotherings of Scripture. Last week, I, I introduced a word called hospitality. Hospitality is a great word. In fact, this past Sunday, I was talking with uh, uh, some folks here at the church, and I said, thank you for sharing your gift of hospitality. And they said, we didn't even know we had a spiritual gift of hospitality. And I said, yes, it's huge. In fact, it's huge in the Bible. In fact, God, uh, uh, the, the Spirit of God is grieved when we don't practice hospitality one to another. But uh, I'm currently reading a book by David Benner called Sacred Companions. And here's what he says about our relationship to one another, about, um, uh, about how we encourage one another in the Lord, this thing of of being together and one another and hospitality. We Christians experience a deep relationship with God that exists when the human spirit is grounded in God's spirit. Spirituality is not Christian if it is not centered in the Holy Spirit. I want to read that again because I had a clip over one of my words. Again, I'm quoting from David Benner's book, Sacred Companions. We Christians experience a deep relationship with God that exists when the human spirit is grounded in God's spirit. That's what our koinonia, that's what our fellowship, that's what hospitality is. It's when believers come together, when we create a safe space for one another and encourage one another that our spirit will be grounded in God's spirit. There's a, there's a big push and a big interest in spirituality in the 21st century, but it's only Christian uh, if it's and when it is centered in the Holy Spirit. And that's where we find real purpose and meaning in life because God created us in his image and he did so to be in relationship with both God and one another. And that's why he's talking about it here, the Apostle Paul, as members of the household of God. God is interested in how we do life together. In fact, he's put us together to accomplish his will on earth as it is in heaven when we worship together, we pray together, we just meet together. You know, God is not just looking for us to do something, but he's looking for us to be something, to be the children of God, to be fellow members of the household of God. And as such, we create safe spaces where people can come and just be themselves and and grow closer to God. And when we realize how much God loves us, it's out of that relationship that flows that we love one another. And we even end up loving our enemies. Pastor Kevin, how do you do that? In and of ourselves, we can't. But that's the importance of understanding and encouraging uh, us to do life together. 
And in my opinion, it's one of the ways that the enemy <clears throat> is coming and maybe even using a pandemic to try to drive us away. But while we, we respect one another and we have to love one another to the degree that we are even at this season having to love at a distance. But the point is we don't quit loving. We don't quit connecting. We don't quit using our gifts to encourage one another in the body of Christ as we're doing life together, that God's will would be done. In fact, uh, uh, Galatians 3, he says, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You have a, a faithful uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, then we're brothers and sisters, right? For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. <clears throat> there is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You want to talk about how to fix social injustices? You want to, you want to figure out how to, how to fix the problem of racism? It's right here. Draw near to God and let him draw near to you. And when you realize how much God loves you as a person, as an individual, and he loves uh, the body of Christ, uh, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's you and that's me, that's whosoever. Some people get hung up there. Well, whosoever is like me. No, whosoever. Whosoever will believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when somebody accepts Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they're a part of the body of Christ. And in him, we become one. And we love one another and we respect one another because they're created in the image of God. And the more we fall in love with Jesus, the more, the more we realize how much God loves us, from that flows our love to our neighbor and to others. Matthew 12 tells us that while he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside, his biological mother and brothers, uh, uh, seeking to speak with him. And they said to him, look, they said to Jesus, look, your, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they want to speak with you. But Jesus answered and he said uh, to the one who told him, who is my mother and, my, and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. You and I doing the will of God, not just doing something, but being the people of God. And that's the point. God's not looking for us to just try harder. We can't just try harder, but we have to encourage one another. Here's what the one another in. Here's the real value of one another in encouraging one another to experience this deep relationship with God in Holy Spirit. And from that relationship flows faithful relationships one another. Jesus is saying that people who are committing to living God's will and doing God's will are his true disciples, and he considers them family. That's why sometimes brothers and sisters in the household of God have closer relationships with each other than they do with biological siblings. I never really had a spiritual father in my earthly dad. He, he wasn't, a, a, for most of his life, not a Christian. At the end of his life, he accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. I believe he lives in heaven today. But, but Jesus um, certainly honored his earthly parents. But I believe what he's saying here is that our spiritual ties can be just as strong and sometimes even stronger than just bi biological ones. We're part of the family of God, right? And as such, we are close because we are living our life for something that's going to outlast it. We have an example, and I'm going to 
give you this for your consideration in our closing today. And I invite your attention to Acts, the second chapter. And I'm going to read a little bit further, uh, five verses, verses 42 through 47. Here's what they did in the early church in Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We have to devote ourselves to that, to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. And all the believers were together. There's that word together again. And they had everything in common. God's design and desire, right? They even, uh, they, they were selling possessions and goods so that they could give to anyone as he had needed. I appreciate so much the body of Christ here at Grace. Um, if you've been in our family room, you see flags from around the world. They, they, they respond to the needs of one another. People give generously and they give sacrificially and they make a difference to, uh, to people. If someone in the, in the body has a need, I've seen people respond in beautiful ways, meaningful ways, loving ways. Sometimes that of, of, of money, sometimes that just of food, sometimes that of, of a helping hand or, or uh, helping somebody clean up after a storm. Most recently, um, through the uh, unexpected death of, 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 of a family member, uh, people responded in meaningful ways to encourage this family. So we want to encourage that. I want to pick up reading uh, in verse 46 of Acts 2. Every day, each and every day, not just once a week, but each and every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number or added to the church daily those who were being saved. You know what? When we'll just be the body of Christ, we don't have to just do more or, or, or figure out something to, to make us more busy. We just need to be the body of Christ and be faithful. Be in love with Jesus. Realize Rick Warren in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, which is now, What on Earth Am I Here For?, he said in that book that the greatest truth that anyone could ever really know is how much God loves them. I want you to pause right now and just, just remember, be reminded that God loves you just the way you are, right? In fact, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That means that God established our value before we, we were ever even born. God loves you. Oh, how he loves you. And the more we understand, and let me rephrase that, because sometimes we can't really fully understand why God loves, but God is love, and God loves us so much that he would rather die for us than to live without us. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so we can become the children of God and brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, right? And the more we'll just be the body of Christ in faithful ways according to the scripture, watch how God wants to add members to the body of Christ. I'm not talking about just in, in the local church here. Yes, we want to continue to grow and be healthy and, and, and be faithful to whatever God has for us. But also when you give to world missions and you gave uh, uh, recently to to Pakistan this past year. That we're participating with God in what he wants to do in those other countries and reaching people and people coming to know the Lord and they are our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. They understood the importance in the first century of gathering together, not just on Sunday, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and Saturday. Why? To encourage and motivate one another each and every day of their life. That's what hospitality is all about, providing that safe space. Not just doing something, but, but being something. 
and and learning someone's name and find out what's going on their uh, in their life that one another in experiencing the word of God together and when we do that we will enjoy better uh, our relationship with God our relationship with one another and what it means to be Christian and to be a part of the community of faith until he comes again and he's coming again and takes us unto himself we continue to build the body of Christ and to build the kingdom of God by just being who God has called us to be encouraging one another to be all that God has called us to be find our place not in just the army but in God's army amen father I thank you for our time together and Lord as we've looked at your at your at your word and what you say to us about being together and about one another in through scriptures Lord, I pray that you would help us to live in faithful ways the, the word of God. Help us, God, to, uh, to pray for one another, to encourage one another through uh, living the word of God and through our teaching and through our fellowship, through a breaking of the bread and through praying for one another from just being who you've called us to be, doing the book, doing your will, your way, and I thank you for adding to the church. I thank you for continuing your work in our hearts and lives and will not fail to praise you and give you glory for it in Christ's name. Amen.